everyone. Welcome to Victory Church Online. As always, we're so grateful that you're joining us here on this platform. We hope you enjoy today's sermon. I'm Pastor Mike Ware. I'll be leading you into 2023. How many of you are ready for a new year? Look, I want you to know that God is with us. He is for us. And he is in us. And I want you to know right now that the Spirit of the Lord is right now, right here, ready to take us to another level. I'm ready to go to another level in this year. How about yourself? Amen. And by the way, I want to say this again. We are not looking backwards. We are looking forward because that's where our future is. That's where the presence of God is. There's nothing you have need of behind you. Everything that God has for you is right in front of you. And in 2023, we're going to reach out and grab it. And I hope I'm not by myself on that. Amen? Amen. All right, listen, before I get cranked up, you know, I want to, I want to speak to everybody that's watching online right now because, um, you know, let me just put it to you this way. It's time to get in church. And if you're in the Denver area, it's time to get in this church. Come on, somebody, are you here? I mean, if you're watching out of convenience, listen, Christianity is not about convenience. It's about commitment. It's about commitment. It's about something. It's about, it's about conviction that we need to do something, connect together. Look, God's not messing around in 2023. Listen to what I'm telling you, church. God is not messing around in 2023. He wants you to get connected. And how can you get connected if you don't show up? And I'm praying that the Holy Ghost will start to stir you up, wake you up, get you dressed, and get yourself down to church. Come on, somebody. Amen. All right. Well, I said that, and I want to get that off my chest. Amen. So good to see all of you in this new year. I feel like it's a new year for me, so I'm ready, and I hope you're ready right now. Listen, uh, this morning I'm going to begin a series of messages over this month of January called Moving the Hand That Moves the World. You can move the hand that moves the world. You can move the hand that rules the world. And I'm going to teach you how to do it. You know, I was reading about a missionary by the name of Herbert Jackson. And uh, when he came to this mission station, they gave him a car to use. The problem was the car wouldn't start until they pushed it off. Now, he worked out an arrangement with a school. There was a school nearby. And, and every morning, he had worked out this arrangement to get some of the kids out of the school to push off his car to get it started. And then, of course, he'd make his rounds and do all those kinds of things throughout the day. And, and of course, sometimes during the day, he would park on a hill so that he could just roll down and get it started. Sometimes he'd just let the engine running. He did that for two years. Two years. Well, his health got bad. He, he had to leave that mission station. A new missionary came to take over. And uh, so, so uh, Dr. Jackson was explaining to this new missionary uh, about this car that he had, that, you know, he had to push it off and all these kind of things. Well, while he was doing it, the, the other new missionary, the young guy, lifted up the, the hood, and he looked under there, and he said, Dr. Jackson, he said, I think I found what the problem is. You know, it was a, it was a, a loose cable. He gave it a little twist. He, he stepped into the car. He turned on the ignition, and the engine roared to life. Two years of needless trouble had become routine for Dr. Jackson because there was power there the whole time. But it was a loose connection that kept him from tapping into that power. And I think this is a picture of some of you here this morning, some of you that are watching right now. This is a picture of you. There is a power available from God that if you can learn how to tap into it, it will change everything about your life, your finances, your family, your future. But the problem is, you've got a loose connection. You know what that loose connection is? If you want to move the hand that moves the world, you know how to fix that loose connection? It's by prayer. Prayer is what fixes the loose connection in your life. And I believe God is calling every one of you as we enter into this new year into a new life of prayer. Look, this is a reset moment for our church. It is a reset moment for your life. Let's don't miss it. Can I hear an amen? amen? Some of you have settled for years with needless trouble trying to jumpstart your life. You've been trying to get somebody to push it off, push you off, trying to get you moving again. Can I tell you what? You don't need somebody to do that. You need to fix the loose connection. And I know I'm speaking to everybody here this morning. 
There's a power at your fingertips to move the hand that moves the world. If you'll give God some time, he'll give you some power. If you'll give God some, so, uh, a minute, he'll give you a miracle. If you'll give God an hour, he'll give you the Holy Ghost. Amen. You can move the hand that moves the world if, if you'll pray. Amen. God's power is waiting to be unleashed. It's at your fingertip. You've got it right here. It's on the tip of your tongue. He just needs you to pray. The problem is you've got a loose connection. Let me read this to you in James chapter 5. It says, the fervent prayer of a righteous man makes much power available. There is a power, much power that is available. I'm talking about a divine heavenly power that is available to every one of us if we will begin to pray. I mean, it doesn't even have to be fervently right now. But just pray. Pray. I'm here to show you how to move the hand that moves the world and how to tap into the power of God. How many of you want some of that this year? I do. I'm talking to the right people right now. And I'm talking to a lot of people that are going to be here next Sunday. You're watching right now. You need to get right here where all the action is. I know television is wonderful, but there's no anointing there. There's an anointing in the house right here. That anointing is going to break the, the spirit that's trying to control your life, that's going to break that power of sickness in your life, and God's going to deliver you. I'm telling you, God wants to do something in 2023. Amen. You better get ready. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. A, a prayerless people are a powerless people. Now, if you just want to walk through your life and be powerless all your life, well, then go help yourself. But I'm here to challenge you. I'm here to help you reset your spiritual life. Amen. You know, you can rely on human power and human ability. We're living in an era where we need some supernatural ability. We need some supernatural power. Amen. So I want to take these next few minutes to help you fix the loose connections in your life. It all begins by talking to God. And by the way, God has opened up his throne room of grace and has invited you in. Isn't that wonderful? He wants you to talk to him. He wants you to share your heart with him. He wants you to cry out to him in your need, in your hurt, in your desperation. Because when you do that, it moves the hand that moves the world. You know what prayer does? It stirs up, stirs up God. It stirs up some Holy Ghost activity. Amen. Come on, Holy Spirit. Come on into this house. It stirs up miracles. It stirs up breakthroughs. It stirs up deliverance. It stirs up salvation. It stirs up all these kind of things. Freedom. It stirs up all those kind of things. Wealth and health and all that good stuff. That's what it does. I think it's time to stir some stuff up. It's time. It's time to stir up the devil with a little prayer and run him out. Amen. Prayer, prayer, prayer. It's the key. It's the key that moves God. Amen. All right, well, how do you do this? How do you move the hand that moves the world? Well, let me sh share some things that I think you need to know. Are you ready? Number one, if you quit praying, you quit believing. Amen. You know, a lot of people pray, they get no answer, and so they just quit. They quit praying. You know, they think, well, God doesn't hear me or anything. And so they lose their faith. And so they quit praying and they quit believing. I have one word for that. You want to hear that word? Dumb. Everybody say dumb. dumb. You know, we, we pray and we don't feel like God hurt us, so we just, we give up our faith. We quit praying. If you want to move the hand that moves the world, you've got to keep praying and you've got to keep believing. Your faith is going to stay strong when you pray. It does for me. When you pray, God hears you. Listen to this. The Bible, Paul says this, be careful for nothing. He said, don't worry about anything but pray. He said, pray about everything. I pray about everything. I remember when I raised chickens one time 40 years ago. I had a chicken that got sick. I prayed over the chicken. I pray about everything. Chicken got healed too. Hello. 
James says you have not because you ask not. The reason why you're so destitute in your spiritual life, maybe in your regular life, because you don't pray. I'm trying to teach you how to move the hand that moves the world. If you start praying, you start believing. If you quit praying, you'll quit believing. There's something about prayer that stirs up your faith. There's something that it causes you to believe when you pray. You know, Jesus said men ought to always pray and not faint. We ought to just pray till the answer comes. Amen. I'm still praying for things from 40 years ago. You're saying, well, don't you ever give up? No. You know the reason why? That's dumb. I'm not as dumb as I look because nobody could be that dumb. You'll get that later on today, I bet. <laughs> Some say, well, God knows all my needs, so, you know, uh, I don't need to ask, you know. I mean, I don't need to pray because he knows all my needs. That's a lie from the devil. Amen. That's, that's dumb. Amen. Who taught you that? Well, I want you to show me that in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. Some say, well, well if, if God hears me, then I don't need to pray more than once. That's dumb. I mean, who, who taught you that? Who told you? I want you to show that to me in the Bible because it's not there. I mean, some say, well, I prayed a few times. I didn't get an answer, so, you know, there's no need to be praying anymore. That's a lie of the devil. That's dumb. Amen. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Amen. You see, the devil never wants you to pray because he knows when you call out to God that, that, that you're serving a God who can move his hand that will move the world, that will touch your life and change your life and your family and your finances and your health and your wealth. He knows it. That's why he tries to discourage you. Look, if you quit praying, you won't have faith. You'll quit believing. Just because you pray and nothing happened doesn't mean God hadn't heard you. You know, I'm thinking about Daniel. The Bible said he prayed and fasted for three weeks. And you know what? I mean, he didn't hear an answer. He didn't know if God had heard him. He never saw a twitch of God's hand. But after three week, weeks, guess who showed up? An angel. And that angel said to Daniel, said, Daniel, you may not know this, but I have been fighting the prince of Persia. I'm talking about principalities and powers that are in the air. So I've been fighting and I've got, I've got archangels. I've got legions of angels. We've been fighting and trying to put a whooping on him. And it took me that long to get to you to let you know that God has heard your prayer. Amen. What would have happened if he would have given up? And quit praying. No, he prayed because he had faith. I pray because I have faith. I believe. There's something about when you pray, your faith is attached to your prayer. That's why if you want to move the hand that moves the world for your life, you got to pray. If you quit praying, you quit believing. We're going to believe is what we're going to do. We're going to keep praying because we believe that what God tells us is true. Look, faith prays, prayer believes. Faith prays, prayer believes. Oh, the devil hates you. He just wants to keep you silent. Saying, oh, I pray, but God never hears me. Let me read this to you out of, out of um, Proverbs 15. It says, the Lord is far from the wicked. But he hears the prayers of the righteous. Come on, somebody, that's us. Amen. You've been made righteous by the blood of Jesus. That means when you call out to God, he hears you. He hears you. God hears you when you pray. Don't quit. Prayer is the demonstration of your faith. Let me read this other scripture, Psalm 18. In my distress, some of you are distressed today. He said, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. And he heard my voice from his temple. And my cry came before him even to his ears. God hears you when you pray. Don't you let the devil tell you anything different. Amen. He hears you. Your faith, I'm going to tell you, your, your, your faith is attached to your prayers. The more you pray, the more you'll believe. The more you'll believe, the more you pray. Amen. Aren't you glad this morning that God hears you? God does nothing except in answer to prayer. Some of you won't do it. 
Because for whatever reason, you know, you just feel like you prayed once, you prayed before. God knows all my need. I don't need to pray very much. You know, many of the most firmly held beliefs are based on sol- are based solidly on ignorance. Did you know that? Amen. A lot of beliefs of people are based on ignorance. And I have learned, in fact, uh, most people I know have never learned how to use ignorance intelligently. This morning early I was praying in the verse, Psalm 66, verse 8 came into my heart. And it said, it says, until Zion travailed, Zion is a type of the church. Until Zion travailed, did she bring forth children? It's a type of prayer. See, God is pregnant. I'll just use that term. He's pregnant with an unseen thing for you, for your life. And what releases that and what God, what causes God to go into travail and to birth is your prayer. See, God hears you. He wants to hear you. Your faith and your prayers are attached to God. If you quit praying, you'll quit believing. It's time for us to start believing that God can do great things. We can move the hand that moves the world. We can do this. Amen. Let me go to number two. If you start praying, God will start hearing. If you quit praying, you'll quit believing. But if you start praying... God will start hearing. God will hear you when you pray. If you don't pray, God won't hear. God can't hear anything you're not saying. Now, look, we, we were in a denominational church when we first got married, which was a long time ago. And, uh, you know, I don't know if the, this denomination still does it or not, but back in that time when they had a prayer meeting at night on what, Wednesday nights or something, they would have a time where it was just silent prayer. And I kept thinking, silent prayer? Uh, what, do I just hum my prayer to God? I mean, do I just, you know, what, silent prayer, that's weird. I'm just sorry. How can God hear me unless I speak? How, will, how, how can I expect God to move unless I'm willing to say, God, I need this. I, I, I'm calling on you. You know, God doesn't need silent prayer. He needs somebody to talk to him. Just like I'm talking to you right now. He is your friend. Jesus is your friend. He came and died on a cross for you. He exchanged places with you for one reason, so he could be an advocate between you and the Father. He wants you to talk to him. Some people say, well, I still don't know if God, I still don't know if God really hears me or not. Well, let me ask you a question. If you slipped up today, And you said a bad word, an ugly word, a profane word, which I know none of you have ever done. (laughs) But if you did, and you said a bad word, do you think God heard that? Whoa, 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 wait a minute. What if you took God's name in vain? Do you think God would hear that? I'm, that's a question. I'm asking you a question. Do you think God will hear it if you took his name in vain? So what makes you think, if God can hear you when you cuss, don't you think he can hear you when you pray? First John 5, listen to this. Now this is the confidence that we have. This is the confidence that you should have. That we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, the next three words are, he hears us. This is the confidence that we should have. That he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, what we ask or whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. It's called faith. Look, I'm trying to show you. I've got three more messages for the rest of this month. Because we're starting off 2023 in prayer. Because it's time to reset our lives spiritually. And it's where it starts right here. It's where it's going to start for this church. God wants you to talk to him. He wants you to speak to him. Jesus rent the veil when he died on the cross to allow you access to the Holy of Holies that you can speak 
to your King and to your Lord who loves you, who wants to hear you, who will use his hand to move the world for you if we pray. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that God hears me. I'm glad that he hears me. I want to show you this verse out of Ephesians 3, verse 20. It says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. I want you to see that verse. Because the first, first few words in there, it says God is able. How many of you truly believe God is able? But the next two words are the most important words. It's to do. He's not just able, but he will do it. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you can ask or think. Look, God, God wants to do stuff. And God can do things. And God wants to do things for your life. He wants to do things for your marriage. He wants to do things for your finances. He wants to do those things. It starts with prayer. If you want to move the hand that moves the world, that's where it begins. Prayer. Some of you have a loose connection. And the Spirit of the Lord is trying to jiggle that a little bit and twist that a little bit and start you so your engine will start. Your spiritual engine will roar to life. That you'll have confidence, boldness, and faith. God is able to do. We need to dare to believe God. Some of you say, well, I don't see those things yet. You know, God is able to do all these wonderful things. Well, I just don't see those yet. Well, maybe that's because you hadn't learned how to pray. Maybe that's because your connection is loose. Is anybody getting anything out of this? Here's what prayer does. It moves you from the natural to the spiritual. We live in such a natural world, don't we? You know, I mean, I have to deal with all the vagaries of this world. But you know, when I begin to pray, and if I pray in the Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, it moves me from the natural realm into the spiritual realm. It's almost like Jesus. He's walking on ground or on the sand. Next thing you know, he's walking on the water. He moved from the natural to the spiritual. And don't you think you can't do that? You can move the hand that moves the world. That's what prayer does, moves you from the natural to the spiritual. That's where God is found. When you believe that you have received it, the scripture says, you shall have it. You shall have it. You can have whatever God says is in the word. Some of you are saying, well, I prayed a few times, it didn't happen. Your connection's loose. You need to keep praying and keep praying. In fact, let me go to number three. If you pray, you will touch God and he will touch you. Amen. If you pray, you will touch God and he will touch you. Now look, the Bible says over and over and over throughout the scriptures, it says when they prayed, when you pray. Matthew 6 talks about it. Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2 and 4 and 6 and 8 and 13. I mean, I looked, I looked a bunch of them up. When you pray. When you pray, the power of God came. When you pray, miracles happened. When you pray, it stirred up Holy Spirit activity. When you pray, there was freedom. When you pray, demons had to flee. When you pray, when you pray. When they prayed, God moved. Jail doors were opened. Lame people walked. Blind eyes saw. Uh, deaf ears heard. When they prayed. You know what I'm believing for? I'm believing that in this month... Somebody's going to get miracle, a miracle in their life. <clears throat> I believe somebody's going to get the breakthrough they've been waiting for for the last 10 years. The doctors have said, you're sick. There's nothing we can do. The doctors don't know Jesus. We know the hand that can move the world. And we're going to see that hand move on you. I tell you, the Lord is stirring me up about the month of January, as we hit the reset button, some of you are going to get a financial breakthrough. How many of you need a little more money? Well, only about a third of you. Well, I'm going to take the other two-thirds that you don't want. <laughs> Amen. And I'm just going to say, okay, God, they didn't want it. I do. I'll take, I'll take it. You know, I've had a little and I've had a lot. Can I tell you which one I like the most? 
a lot. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He just doesn't provide for your needs, he provides for your wants. I'm going to teach you some of this. I'm just going to tell you right now. The next three Wednesday nights, we're going to have church right here from 7 to 8 o'clock. Now, you can stay at home if you like. We're not going to be streaming it, so you can't watch it. So don't get lazy on God. So I want you here. Jeannie and I are going to be here, and we're going to worship God. Our worship team is going to be here, and we're going to worship God. I hope you join us. Because I'm going to teach you some of the prayer secrets, some of my personal prayer secrets. I want to teach you about it. Let me, let me, look, when, when you pray, you touch God, and God touches you. It's not what happens when you, know, when you pray. It's what happens after you pray. Because when you pray, you touch God. Jeremiah 33 3 says, call on me. And I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. God wants to reveal things that you don't know. He wants to he wants to reveal things that you haven't seen or you've never even considered. You know, if you touch God, he'll touch you. That's what prayer does. He said he will show you. The word, when it says he will show you great and mighty things to come, the word show you means to experience it. I want this church to experience things you've not seen, things you've not heard, things you've never considered. Because you've, you've touched the Lord and he's touched you. You have moved the hand that moves the world. God is able to be touched. In Hebrews 4, it says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. That's Jesus. It's telling us that Jesus can be touched. Your prayers touch God. They come before God. In Acts chapter 10, it talks about Cornelius. It says his prayers and his giving came up before God as a memorial. The prayers, it says in Revelations, it says that the prayers of the saints are like in vials. And they fill the, fra- they fill the, the presence of God with the fragrances of God's prayer. Your prayers touch God. It reminds God that you're there. That it's a constant reminder that you're touching him when you pray. It's that constant reminder. And it causes the hand of God to move. I just want to close with this incredible principle in Mark chapter 6, verse 56, talking about Jesus. Whenever he entered, wherever he entered into villages, cities, or the country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might just touch the hem of his garment I want you to see this. They begged that they might just touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched him were made well. I want you to grab this remarkable biblical truth, this righteous truth. As many as touched him were made whole. Those who strained to touch him were healed. You know, the, here's how I think about prayer right now. I think about prayers. You reaching up your hand, straining to touch the presence of God, touch, touch the hem of his garment. That's what your prayers do. You're straining to touch him. Because you know if you touch him, he will touch you. It's like the woman with the issue of blood. You know that story. I mean, for, for 12 years, she had spent everything she had trying to get healed. She couldn't get healed. She was on her last leg. She was so weak, she couldn't even walk. She crawled through the crowd thinking, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Yeah. And she overcame every obstacle and every person. And she crawled through the crowd and touched his garment. And Jesus said, I felt virtue leave me. Hers was a type of prayer. When are you going to start crawling on your knees and saying, God, I need you? When are you going to start going to crawl through the obstacles and the crowds and the distractions and say, Lord, I'm straining, I'm reaching out because I'm going to touch the hem of your garment because I'm praying, I'm seeking the hand that moves the world in my life. When are you going to do that? You can't touch if you're disconnected. You can't touch if you have a loose connection. And I'm going to stop right here because you can move the hand that moves the world, but it starts with prayer. Some of you have a loose connection today, and the Spirit of the Lord wants to fix that. 
He's lifting up the hood of your soul. He said, oh, there's the problem right there. If you stick the key in the ignition and turn it on, you're going to find your spiritual life is going to roar with power. It starts with prayer. Just close your eyes for just a moment. And I want to ask you, who needs a reset for 2023? You need a spiritual reset. Just slip your hand up. I'm not going to call you forward because I don't have time to do that right now. I just want you to say to God, not to me so much, but to God, Lord, I've got a loose connection. My prayer life is not what it needs to be. I've kind of quit. I've given up. I've gotten lazy. You know, if you just got up 10 minutes earlier in the morning, it might, it'll make all the difference in the world. Just spend that 10 minutes with God. You know, I've always said, you can't be with men until you've been with God. You want to move the hand that moves the world? You need to slip your hand up and say, Lord, I know I'm not where I need to be. You see, I'm not begging you. I'm telling you. God wants to reset things in your life, but it's up to you to make the decision. I can't make it for you. Is there anyone else? Because I'm about to pray. 2023. It's a reset moment. Father, I thank you for the precious people. These are your children. Oh, how much you love us. How much you care for us. And they lifted their hands saying, Lord, I have a loose connection. I have a loose connection. And I want to fix it right now. I'm asking you to jiggle those wires, whatever it takes, Lord God, so that I have something solid that connects me to you. Lord God, if I quit praying, I'll quit believing. And I don't want to do that. I want faith to rise up in me, Lord. Lord God, I want you to move in my life in a mighty way, in a powerful way. Because Lord, I know if I start praying, you'll start hearing. And if I touch you, you'll touch me. Lord, I need the hand that moves the world to touch me thank you Jesus for helping me do this I'm starting today this is the day that I begin in Jesus name everybody look at me for just a moment you know the Bible says if you regard iniquity in your heart the Lord will not hear you now how are you going to fix the loose connection when you have there's been no connection because you've never asked Christ into your heart. And it could be that somebody here, maybe some of you right now watching, they need to be here next Sunday. Maybe you're saying today, how can I have a connection when I don't really, I don't know the Lord is my savior. I've never asked him into my heart. I've never asked him to forgive me of my trespasses, my sins, my iniquity. Maybe 2023, the reset button you need to hit this morning and today is I need to give my life to Christ. I've been living for myself, not doing a good job at it. In fact, I'm not really good at it at all. I'm always trying to get myself out of a mess. I'm always feeling like sin is overcoming me. I feel guilty and shame. You don't have to live this way anymore. You can be free today because there is a hand that will move and will touch you if you'll just call out to him this morning. Now, you don't need to bow your heads and close your eyes. If somebody needs to give their life to Christ, you need to start this new year right. Slip your hand up. Say, this is me. This is me. Amen. Is anybody else? Amen. This is your moment. Father, thank you for the people who are responding right now. This is their moment. Lord, the hand that moves the world has just reached down back into creation and just touched that person. Lord, I'm calling out to you this morning because I know I'm a sinner. I've failed you. I've made mistakes. And I'm asking you to be my Lord and Savior. I'm starting this year right in the name of Jesus. And I give to you all the praise and glory in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give God an offering, a great offering of praise as we celebrate what he just did. Well, uh, how many of you are really serious about committing to a stronger prayer life in 2023? Okay. You're the kind of people I want to be around. 
And we're going to see some mighty things happen this year. Now listen, starting today, we're beginning 21 days of prayer and fasting. Some of you are saying, my Lord, how am I going to miss 21 days of not eating? Well, I mean, if you want to miss 21 days of eating, that's fine. But why don't you find a day or days between now and the end of the month? And uh, why don't we just take a day or some days and fast? And why don't we do what we just said we would do? We would change our prayer life. We would reset our spiritual life. And let's pray and seek the Lord. Set aside some time. Bring your flesh into subjection. That's what fasting is about. By the way, fasting Netflix is not a fast. I don't see that in the Bible. Well, it's not there. Don't use that as an excuse. Don't tell me about it because I'm going to rebuke you in a nice, loving sort of way. Amen. Fasting is when you don't eat something. You say, well, I'm just going to give up Brussels sprouts. No, that's not a fast. You don't eat them anyway. But starting today, we're going to begin our fast. And then, like I said, for the next three Wednesday nights, we have three, three Wednesday nights left in this month. From 7 to 8 p.m., we're going to be right here. We're going to worship the Lord. I'm going to share a little devotion with you. I'm going to share some of the prayer secrets and how I pray. And I have a feeling it's going to really help you to understand. I can pray an hour. It doesn't even, I mean, I can pray an hour. It doesn't even, I don't even blink. I just wonder where the hour goes. I'm going to teach you how to pray. I'm just going to teach you some simple things that I do. Maybe it will help you. Maybe not. Maybe you can teach me something. But we're going to do that. We're going to spend some time in prayer. I know it's a commitment, but it is a decision. A decision. And we're going to make it. And this could be one of the most life-changing decisions you will make for 2023. I'm asking you to be here. Now, before we end this service today, we're not just going to make our commitment to pray. We're going to make our commitment to give. I want you to get your offerings prepared. If you do it digitally, go ahead and do that. If you're online right now, just go to Victory Denver. Just type in Victory Denver to 94,000, and you can get right to that place. Or go to the website, victorydenver.com, and you'll find everything you need to know. There are boxes in the back by the doors. If you're writing a check or you have cash, whatever it is, I, I think there's envelopes in the seat back there in front of you if you need to use that. We're going to start this year right. We're going to get our prayer life right. We're going to get our giving right. Come on, somebody needs to say amen to this. I told you, God's not messing around anymore. If you're going to call yourself a Christian, we need to do what Christians do. And I'm calling on you to do this. We're here to support this ministry. We're here to support the work of God. And everything we do you know, we, we support missionaries around the world. We reach out to people. We're here to see people saved and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's because of our giving that we do that. We need your partnership, not with us, but with God. God's called you to do it. Some of you are saying, well, I don't like it when you talk about money. Well, then you need to tear a lot of pages out of your Bible because God talks about money. He talks about how to open the windows of heaven to your life. He said, bring your tithes and offerings into the house of God. He said, when you do, he said, I will open up the windows. Of you want to move the hand that moves the world and your finances? You need to pray. You need to learn how to give the way he says to give. I'm challenging you. 2023, I'm going to challenge you. Because we're not going to sit and let grass grow under our feet anymore. We're not just going to sit there in warm chairs on Sunday mornings. We're going to be about the Father's business. Who's with me on that? Amen. Father, I want you to bless this church. I want you to bless these, your people. And I want you to bless these offerings that we're bringing to you, our tithes, our gifts that are above, Lord God, what you've asked us to do because of your powerful name and your powerful word. Lord, we want to see the hand that moves the world move in our lives, move in our finances, move in our family, and move in our future. Lord, we're calling on you right now in prayer, with faith, we believe that if we touch you, you'll touch us. Now, Lord, I ask you to do that right now. Bless these offerings in the name of Jesus. And everybody shouted. Thanks for checking out today's sermon and making it a priority in your life. For more encouragement throughout your week, be sure to follow us on social media at Victory Denver. We hope to see you on Sundays at 10 a.m. and right back here at Victory Church Online.